Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back, all of my beautiful friends from the internet. I hope every single one of you is doing very well on this fine, fine Tuesday evening and whenever during the week that you may be listening to this podcast. Now, before we head into the podcast, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like, make sure to comment, and to subscribe. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever else you get your podcasts, make sure to leave us a rating, and also please leave us a review. You can find us on Instagram and TikTok at Reddit Asks Us Podcast. I am your host, Luke Dick, and welcome to the Reddit Asks Us Podcast. Okay. Now, before we head into the show, everybody, I just want to again thank you all for tuning in. I know I've been slacking. I've been, I've been talking about like three for like three, two or three weeks now, giving you guys the second episode. I think this is the week, guys. I think this is the week that I'll be able to give you guys that second episode. And uh, I, you know what? I'm going to try to challenge myself to be able to do as many double episodes per week. You guys will always get the Tuesday episode, but... I don't know, I was thinking maybe bi-weekly or something, I'll be able to add an episode on a Thursday, because, you know, it's, it's not like these are really that hard to record or do, and uh, it just, yeah, it really matters what, what's what been going on on Reddit, and, but, you know, Reddit's been great as of recently, actually. I think the, uh, the pandemic being, you know, kind of winding down and whatnot has really gotten people back, I don't know, I feel like it's added, I don't know, a level of, a level of, um inspiration and in interaction again with people that people are because people are now going through their everyday lives and I think I think a lot of the you know um, inspiration for the questions on reddit come from people's everyday lives like the question that we will hear today um, and so people people here talk about the stuff in their everyday lives and then they end up putting out a question on reddit and then it ends up blowing up uh, as a post and people comment under on it and tell their stories and and I think that's just really hard to do during the pandemic because everyone's at home and no one's really socializing anymore but now that we're all talking again and talking with people and stuff um, it, you know things like this flow into your normal life again and then that way you can you know transition those those things into your internet life. So, without further ado, guys, we have a great, amazing, wonderful, and exciting episode today. Today's episode is, what is the pettiest reason you can't date someone? This one, my goodness, there were amazing comments under this one, and I just, I cracked up quite a couple times here. So, I'm excited and thrilled to be able to share every single one of, not every single one of these comments, but... All the comments that I do share, I will be thrilled to uh, share with every single one of you. And uh, yeah, without further ado, why don't we just hop right into the show, folks? Okay, um, so yeah, this one comes from the main Ask Reddit page. What is the pettiest reason you can't date someone? First comment comes from the Ronald Chase. Wasn't my pettiness, but a girl I went on a few dates with wouldn't date me because she wanted to be the artistic one in the relationship, and she worried that me being a musician would spoil that for her. Edit, wasn't real deep into it. It was just a couple of dates. I don't feel negatively towards her. She was a nice person enough. Uh, also, music isn't my career, more of a passionate hobby. I work in IT by day. Uh, yeah, this is like... <sighs> Uh, let me just read the next comment or the, the comment or the reply under this and then we can get into it. But uh, this so the comment uh, reply under this was from the man far from far away. Uh, These people cracked me up. A lady I was once neighbors with described herself to me as being a real hippie. Our bin was always full of her garbage from the Amazon orders. She got several times a week. Everything she ate arrived via skip. And she bought a bike once to try to be more green, but when she found out she liked, uh, when she found one she liked better, she bought it. Uh, when I asked her about buying the old one, she implied that she either had tossed it off the bridge into a river or dumped it in a ditch somewhere. She was not a hippie. She just didn't shave or shower. <laughs> What an excuse. What a perfect excuse. Uh, you could call any anytime you miss a day for showering or, or anything like that uh, or shaving. You can just be like, oh, I'm just going hippie. Like just an excuse for literally anything that you could do. Yeah, my feet smell. Oh, I'm, you know, I'm a hippie. Yeah, you could literally, you know, just, literally you could use that excuse for just for anything. Oh, man, your your house is kind of dirty, bro. Like you ever think about cleaning that? No, bro. I'm a hippie, bro. What are you talking about, man? Hippies don't clean their house. What the fuck? What are you talking about? No way. 
bro, your room, man. Like, you got to organize this shit, bro. Like, what's up with that? Like, why don't you clean your room? Bro, what the fuck, man? I'm a hippie, dude. Hippies don't clean their rooms. The fuck? Hippies don't even have rooms, bro. We live in vans, bro. Like, my room isn't even a room, bro. It's just, like, the manifestation of my van, bro. Like, my my van that I, like, I'm going to get, you know? Like, it's, like, it's in the process, though. Like, it's just, like... Yeah, I'm going to get it later, though. All right, man. But those dishes, though, bro. Like, you ever think about cleaning up those dishes, bro? Like, how do you eat, man? Like, it smells, man. Like, the, it's getting pretty bad. Bro, what? Really, dude? You just asked me about the dishes, bro? For real? Bro, I'm a hippie, bro. I don't do the dishes. Bro, what? Come on, bro. As if you don't know this, man. What? I'm a hippie, bro. Hippies don't do that. Bro, you can't you can't use that as an excuse, man. You can't use that as an excuse. You can't just can't just be dirty and say that you're and say that you're just a hippie. What do you mean, bro? Get out of here, bro. I'm just I'm just being a hippie, man. Like there we go. I hope you guys like my little uh my little improv skit there. A lot of this podcast is improv. I don't re- I don't rehearse any of this. So uh yeah, I'm pretty uh I'm pretty, uh, you know, I'm on the improv train, you know, I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty savage with the improv. No, I've just been watching a lot of Curb Your Enthusiasm. Shout out my friend Sam, put me onto the show. Everything's improv, so now I've just got this, like, I got the improv bug. But, uh, and you gotta improv on this show. I feel like I used to try to write maybe scripts every once in a while, but it's just, it doesn't come off as natural. It doesn't come off funny or whatever. But sometimes, improvising can be very difficult because then I'll... I'll have like a really off day and I just don't feel funny or feel energized or, you know, whatever. And uh, I'll try to like be funny and, and it just cr- is cringe. I don't know. You guys have listened to the episodes. I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Anyways, um, next comment comes from Lion Princess Lioness. Uh, I literally, or maybe, did, did we finish talking about this? Oh, yeah. I just wanted to say that like, man, like... Why? What does that even mean? Being the artistic one in the relationship, like, what does that even, like, what does that even mean? Like, I, every, what? Like, everyone has like a has, you know, uh, a way of expressing their art. Like, you don't have a, you don't have ownership over art as a hobby. That's like that's like that's like me, you know, having a significant other or a friend who also likes to play basketball and be like, no, 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 no. Like, I got to be, sorry, man. If this friendship is going to work out, bro, I got to, I got to be the basketball player. You know, I'm sorry about that, bro. Like, what? What? Like, it just doesn't even make any sense, man. Some people are just, people are so, I don't know what it is, man, protective over their own interests for like what reason though? Because are they afraid that like they're going to be less special if somebody else also likes what they do? But it's like newsflash, like, people are there's the human spectrum of things that we do is generally like there's a spectrum of things that we can do you know what i mean so if you have if you like a certain hobby odds are like there's also somebody else out there who likes that hobby so you don't like you have ownership over any of these like hobbies or whatever but okay i'm rambling but so this one comes from lion princess lioness i literally rethought my about my relationship with my ex when we went to the zoo i paid for everything tickets parking food gift shop etc which all wasn't cheap and he had the nerve to say our trip to the zoo was boring bro okay zoos if you've never been to a zoo okay maybe that's a nasty comment it's not very considerate or nice but you can give somebody a leeway but it's like okay a zoo is a zoo They don't, there's no rides, you know, there's no, there's no, there's no extremities, you know, it's not Disneyland, it's not Legoland, you know what I mean? A a zoo is where you go look at animals, it's a fucking zoo, you know, like, it's, that's what you do, you go there to, 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 to fucking look at animals, that's the whole point, there's not really much else to it than that, there really isn't, at least not the, not the zoos that I've been to. Now, I've been to a fair amount of zoos. Let me just tell you, I've been to a fair amount of zoos, okay? I, 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 I'm one of them. I'm one of those guys. I like zoos. Zoos are cool, man. You go, you go, I mean, well, zoos are, zoos are cool because you get to see the animals, but, you know, also there's a lot of problems with the zoos because, of course, you know, they, you know how, they, how they keep the animals captive, and so that's, you know, it's, it's not really great. But, 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 um, you know, a zoo is an interesting place. 
But you got you you can't set your expectations too high because at the end of the day, it's not like a zoo has a whole lot to offer anyways. You look at animals. That's what you go there to do. It's not really much else than that. So if you're disappointed when you go to the zoo, you set your expect expectations way too high, my friend. You need to bring those expectations way down and enjoy the fact that you just go fucking look at a giraffe. When do you get to see a giraffe? When in your real life do you get to see a giraffe? There's people, there's people in Africa who don't even see a giraffe. Who've ne there's, there's people in Africa who've never even seen a giraffe in their entire life. Unless they went to a zoo. Like, you know, you gotta lower your expectations, people. Especially when somebody goes out of their way to do something for you, man. And a zoo sounds like a fun thing. Honestly, a zoo, I mean, apart from seeing animals, it's an expensive walk. You know, because that's what you do. You know, you don't go on rides, there's not a whole lot there, like I said. It's just a walk, right? You just walk through, you look at the animals, you know, you feed some maybe. I mean, they have shows, they have shows, you know, some of them, they do tricks and whatnot, some shows, but for the most part, you go and look at the animals, right? It's an expensive walk, right? Prepare yourself for that and be thankful and appreciative when somebody tries to do something for you and somebody and, and somebody goes out of their way and spends their hard-earned money and, is, and, and, and is, extends their generosity towards you, my friends. This is some... I mean, you guys know this. You, you, you guys know. I'm preaching to the choir. Anyways, next episode come. Uh, next episode. Next comment comes from Kia Serp Seventeen. Ended things with a guy over various other reasons, but the most annoying was how many times he told me that he'd leave me for Miranda Lambert in a heartbeat. Which, okay. I get it. Some people have a list of celebrities they'd leave their significant other over, mostly as a joke. But this was every day just randomly, said not related to the conversations that we were having at the time, and he meant it. He made sure I understood that if for some godforsaken reason Miranda Lambert walked in through the front door, I was gone. I, uh, I didn't even know who Miranda Lambert was. I had, when I was reading this comment, I had, to, I had to look that up. Apparently she's some country singer. And, like, people, man, people are so petty, bro. Like well, you're no, you're not gonna you're not gonna meet Miranda Lambert, bro. Like you're not gonna meet you're not gonna meet these people. And if you do, oh, you know what you know what gets me about like that like that those types of comments is like you're assuming Miranda Lambert would want to be with you. Miranda Lambert is a celebrity. Like she's got all the people in the world to choose from. She's not going to choose to be with you, my guy. <laughs> like, that's the last thing she's going to choose to be with. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, I don't know how people imagine this going in their heads, but they just think that, oh, you know, as soon as, as soon as I see this, this celebrity, you know, oh, I'm, I'm dumping you. It's like, well, what, what makes you think that, <laughs> what makes you think the celebrity wants to be with you? They've got all the options, man. Like, like you're the one who's, you're the one who's the desperate one clawing for this. It's like, it's so unrealistic. I just, th th that's what baffles me about this is the people have this audacity to think that like, that like, oh, if, if you did meet that person, then it's an automatic, like it's a, sh you're a shoe in, you know what I mean? You're just like the, you're, you're that guy, you know, it's just like, dude, shut the fuck up. Like, that's just, not only is that not going to happen, but number two, if it does happen, odds are. Yeah, there's a lot of people on the list, you know, to 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 date or hang out with Miranda Lambert before you do, my friend. Like, and odds are you're probably gonna come across pretty fucking creepy, <laughs> like, because you're gonna have this like intense, like, well, intense intent on on being with her that you're gonna be obsessed if you do see her. There's also a good chance you don't even talk to her at all, but. You're going to see this person have this just just burning passion, intense, you know, need to to want to be with this person. You're going to come across desperate and and weird and creepy and she's probably going to fucking call the cops on you or get her bodyguards to fucking beat you the fuck up. So, I'm telling you this right now. Odds are, my friend, be happy where you're at cuz that's just not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I, I it's just it's just not going to happen. Um okay, next one comes from User go banana forty two, only went on one date, but uh, he named his cat Creamy, and the way he said it grossed me out. Yeah, it, listen to my voice when I say that. Okay, you don't have to be a creepy person to name your cat Creamy, and that sounds weird. It sounds weird coming out of my mouth. It sounds cringe. It sounds fucking disgusting. It sounds gross. 
Like I'm saying that. I know you listeners are hearing that and and you're cringing. You're like, ugh. 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 Creamy. Ugh. Like, ew. Ew. Why do you call your cat that? That's disgusting. Like, even cream. Like, oh. Oh, God. Oh, fuck. That's fucking... Dis- That's actually so gross. Oh. That's such a terrible name for a cat. It's got that same vibe as moist. It's like naming your cat moist. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Like, why? Ugh. That's a that's an odd name for a cat. Okay, if you if you're naming your cat creamy, ugh, ugh, makes me want to throw up. Just just just. I know you guys are wanting to throw up too. That's just disgusting. <laughs> that's so that's so gross. Yeah, you're you're. Uh, I think something's a little, uh, something's a little, uh, you know, not, not everything's going right upstairs for you if that's uh, what you're naming your cat, okay? That's pretty fucking, ugh, that's gross. So we are with you, Go Banana 42 We also think that's fucking disgusting. All right, next one comes from uh, Friededs, Friededs 3. Uh, she talks to people like they're 100 meters away from her. Hey! Hey, how are you doing? Oh, yeah, I'm great. Yeah, that's pretty much it. You get the idea. People who yell when they talk. I'm like in my apartment building. I'm like, I'm like yelling. I'm like, somebody, somebody's going to be like, who the fuck is yelling at me? Um, but yeah, that's, uh, you know, I, I have to say, though, folks, I am guilty of this. I have, my dad and I both have very loud voices. So my mom, she's got this like, I mean, you guys can't see me right now, but uh, maybe you will in the coming weeks. Who knows? I think that's one thing I will be adding to the show as an aspect. Um, but giving you a little teaser, a little hint. But uh, my mom does this thing with her hand where, you know, she'll tap me if my voice is too loud. And she'll she'll you know, she'll have her hand as if it's like, uh, I don't know how to describe it. She sticks out her, her, her hand like above her head and then she kind of just like lowers it, you know. She's like, bring the volume. Because we ha- we just have these like super loud voices, so oftentimes, you know, actually, if I'll meet somebody new or if we're out someplace, I have a very difficult time, uh, especially when I'm in, when I'm in a loud room or what feels like a loud room to me, I I have a very difficult time differentiating sounds, and it's very distracting. So I have to talk loud in order to focus, you know, because because I need I need a I need a focal point. In order to ground myself and not, because sometimes I'll be talking, and I'll forget what I'm talking about because the background noises are distracting me, and I can't focus on what I'm trying to say. So then I end up having to speak loud so that my voice is at the forefront of of my of you know my conscious mind, and uh, and that's the thing that I'm trying to focus on. And so then I can get my point across, but I find that if I'm in like a loud room or a distracting room or a room with, uh, you know, uh, a lot of things happening, I'll find it hard to focus on what I'm trying to say. And then I'll end up coming across, you know, like a fucking idiot because I'll just lose my train of thought constantly. So I, uh, I am guilty of that. I am, I I am guilty. I try when I'm one-on-one with people to keep my voice down. But then that's the thing is that, one, if I get into a really good conversation with somebody and we're having like a really good back and forth, my voice will just naturally just get louder and louder and louder because I'm getting so involved, you know, and, and, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting uh, invested in the conversation. And so you gain this momentum and this momentum not only does it, does it, uh, it comes with speed, so I'll talk faster, but then also it comes with, with volume. So then I'll start talking really fast and then I'll also start talking really loud And, uh, just because I, I'm so engaged and you feel it's a, it's a fire you feel. And it's like, it's like, um, it's almost like when you're in the zone too, like when you're in that like state of flow and you're, uh, you know, you're, I don't know, you're whatever you're choosing to do, you're drawing a painting or you're, you're, or or painting a painting or drawing something, or I don't know, whatever your hobby is mine, you know, basketball. Like, so if I'm, if I'm like really in the zone when I'm playing basketball, it's like, it's like a burning feeling. It's like, it's like, it's like a, it's a good feeling. It's a motivating feeling. Almost like how I'm feeling actually right now, right now. 
So um, yeah, I'm even looking at my audio here, and I'm like louder than normal than I am normally. So I'm feeling energized today. That's why I my last couple episodes have been a little doom and gloom. No, not really. I don't know. They've been okay, but uh, yeah, I really want to come at you guys with the best content and the most enthusiastic content. Content. So that's kind of when I and I love doing the podcast. You know, when I'm feeling great, because then I'm much more you know, passionate and upbeat and ready to talk about whatever. Next one comes from Spegali. She wouldn't clear the excess time off the microwave. And then there's a reply from flower, the pork chop 67. My wife does this been married 37 years. We didn't have a microwave when we got married. It drives me up the fucking wall. This gives me leaving the TV at an odd number volume energy. Like, okay. This is how it works. You leave the TV volume in increments of five or an even number, except when that number comes after a five. Okay? So you can leave the TV volume, let's just say 20 to four, uh, 30 to uh, 30 to 40, okay? You can leave the TV volume at 30. You can leave it at 32. Oh, here we go. It's the, it's also, you cannot leave it at 34. It's okay. Maybe some people won't bat an eye, but it's like, if you're going to do 34, go 35. What do we, what, what's the difference? You cannot go 36. Okay. Because then it's like, what? Some people, again, might be okay with the 36. I personally would turn it down one, 35. 37? Get the fuck out of my apartment. Get the fuck out. All right? 38? Acceptable. 39? Get the fuck out! Okay, if you leave the fucking TV at 31 or 30 30 fucking 9 with a 1 or a 9, there's a good chance I will never fucking see you again in my entire life, okay? I don't want to fucking see that TV volume at 31 or 39 ever, okay? You guys can tell how passionate I am about this. This is a core value for me, okay? This is as deep as it gets, guys. This is the deep cuts. We are making the deep cuts, okay? Same thing with the goddamn microwave. Get it. Just clear the numbers. Just clear the numbers. Just clear the numbers. It is not difficult. Number one, I don't know why you're taking something out of the microwave before it's done. You know? You, you learn to use a microwave at a very young age. Over that period of time... You should get better at guessing how long it's going to take to warm something up. Like, okay, yeah, you got to get used to a new microwave, blah, 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 blah. You don't have to get used to a new microwave for very long to understand its power. I'd say you, 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 you use a microwave, and you're using a microwave all the time, most people. You use a microwave two weeks. Two weeks, I'll give you two weeks, maybe three. All right, you should understand your microwave's power or settings, okay, and how long it should take to warm something up. All right, you'd think that after years of using microwaves, you should know how long it takes to warm something up. I don't know why you're leaving excess numbers on there. I don't know where, what, where, why, where are these numbers coming from? What's the, what, 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 what just, just be more accurate. Just guess better, okay? It is not that difficult, you know? So also, if you do end the microwave before it is time, who, like, what do these people do? They just open the door? I feel like I've made myself a habit of pressing cancel first and then opening the door instead of just opening the door, taking it out and leaving. Like, just turn it off first. If it's going, just turn it, turn it off. Just press the cancel button and then open the door. If you open the door, you're going to forget it. It's the same as leaving the cupboard doors open. Why? How? I don't know. Beats me. Beats me. Beats my understanding, guys. 
Next one comes from New England Roast Beef. She insisted on hanging out at home. She lived with like six people and they always had friends over. I felt like an extra boy, like a boyfriend extra on Friends or Seinfeld. Yeah, I, uh, some people, some people have like the weirdest social intelligence, you know, and you know, someone's normal. Okay. Like you, you can give people, you know, leeway if they are, you know, maybe socially challenged, very introverted people who struggle socially. Um, like, okay. Those people, you get leeway. All right. And you can tell when somebody's, you know, challenged in a social, show de- de- social demeanor. Okay. You, you, you know, this, all right. You can tell. Like if you're if you're a regularly social person, you can tell most of the time you can even tell when your your own social behaviors are 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 not, you know, up to par. But it's the it's the unawareness for me, especially when people are like seemingly normal, you know? Like I don't want to make any prejudice or or you know, prejudgments about people, but from what it sounds like, this person was normal. All right? Well, normal enough. But you got to have, like, how does that make any sense? Maybe it could have been they were just more comfortable around their friends. But, okay, you're more comfortable around your friends. That's great. But you got to break out of your comfort zone. You can't live with the same six people your entire life. You know what I mean? Like, and then, and then I wonder why no one wants to be with you or date you or something like that. It's, well, it's maybe the fucking six people in your house that you're always taking back. You know what I mean? And let me put it also to you the, this way, guys. If you're out there and you don't like, you know, you're struggling with dating and whatnot, uh, and you, you know, you're wondering why people won't come back to your apartment. My guys, my, my, my folks, my all people, you got to go out. Like, you got to do stuff outside of your house. You have to do things in what's called a neutral environment. Coffee shop, wine bar, regular bar, park, uh, Chuck E. Cheese, um, literally anything. Uh, Golf, mini golf, like fair or just there's endless. There's endless things you can do. Like, it's just you have to you have to. Well, being creative is part of it, but you can also look this up on the internet. People need to be and 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 learn and be comfortable being okay with your presence knowing that they feel comfortable and safe around you. You know what I mean? You can't get to that point if like I'm telling you right now, if I was dating a girl and she brings she's like, "Do you want to come back to my apartment after like the first date?" I'm going to be like, "I don't know." Like, I'm going to be like, that's a little, like, this is a little quick. I mean, maybe it depends on the connection, right? It's all this why that's dating. But I'm going to tell you this right now. If I do say yes, and I go back to her place, and there's like six people there, ah, uh, you know what? I'll let it slide. If that happens every next time that we go out, that's red flag, okay? That's like, yeah, why are you taking me back to your apartment with like six people here, you know? Like, this is... It doesn't, yeah, we got to do something. You know what I mean? It's, it's at that point, it becomes what we call my friends inconsiderate. Okay. You must be considering the feelings, thoughts, and emotions and whatever else of others. All right. That is something we must keep on the forefront of our perception is the perception of how other people are feeling. Body language, if you're normal and, you know, and I don't necessarily want to say normal, but if you're, if you're, um, socially adept, um, reading social cues and body language is not difficult. You know what I mean? It is very clear when somebody's uncomfortable, you know, it's very clear when somebody's not having fun. It's, you know what I mean? And if it's not, then they're very good at hiding it. You know what I mean? And then you wouldn't know, and they would want you not to know. You know, if, they, if somebody wants to hide something of emotion, they will hide it. They do. They will. They will not. They will not want you to see that they that they are hiding that emotion. You know, but um, in other words, and in most times, 
reading people's emotions and feelings and thoughts is not that difficult. You just have to be able to read into how people are feeling and be considerate of, of our fellow humans, okay? We have to be considerate of our fellow persons on this planet. Um, so next one comes from, oh, geez. Spencer spelled with threes, 420. Spencer 420. My grandparents were very Southern. And when I was a kid, I spent the night at their house and I heard them wrestling. I heard my grandpa say my grandma's name, Sarah, but with the accent, he said, Sarah. I met a girl named Sarah who was also Southern. When she introduced herself as Sarah, I had to nope out. It just gave me the heebie-jeebies. Yeah, I uh, totally understand that. Now, reply comes from, you're in good hands. Rewind to me and my friends are out at this bar in college. My buddy Dave and I are seniors and his sister is a sophomore. And we just turned 21, so she's out with us. Oh, and, and just turned 21, so she's out with us. We're having a good time and look over and his sister is chatting with this guy at the bar. Fast forward an hour or two and they're still talking, except she's basically on his lap and they're making eyes at each other. 1.30, last call. We're getting ready to go and checking to see if she's coming home with this guy or coming with us. She's not there. We look around and she's sitting with her girlfriends at a table. We collect her and we're, as we're walking out, I ask what happened to the dude. Turns out his name was Dave. I can't go home with this with this with a guy with the same name as my brother. Bro got turned down because of his first name. Savage. This has been a common occurrence on this thread, uh, on this on this comment section. Listen, that's tough. But I don't care if you've got the same name as my mom, my aunt. Well, no. It depends. Nah, it's just as all in general purposes, if you have the same name as one of my family members and you don't pronounce it in like the short version or like a different version, if you pronounce it and everything is the same as one of my family members, I'm sorry, but I, I come on, like, come on, you can't, you can't. Then people are going to be asking, like, if you do date that person, people are going to be like, uh, bro, like, don't you think it's a little weird that your girlfriend has got the same name as your mom? Like, what are you going to say? Yeah, bro. No, dude. I love it, bro. No, it's awesome, bro. Like, if you say that, media red flag. You're fucked up. There's something going on there. You're fucked up if you say that. And then, like, I mean, I guess you could go for the middle of the road response. Or you could be like, so there's there's either extreme. There's the, no way. And then there's also the, yeah, it's like super weird. But then it's like, okay, well, then why are you dating her? I don't know. We get along. But you think it's weird, though? Yeah, dude, it's like super, super weird. Well, then why are you guys going out still? Well, you know, I like her. She's nice. You know, good person. But you, the name thing. Yeah, dude, I just... It's fucked, man. It's fucked. What is... It just seems, it almost seems like a contradiction. You know what I'm saying? Like, it feels like a contradiction. But then you guess you go for the middle of the road response and it'd be like, yeah, you know, it's weird, but, you know, it's, yeah, I don't even, I just, you know, you know what? I don't, I don't know if there's a middle of the road response to this. I don't know. It feels like, dude, your girlfriend's got the same name as your mom, bro. Like, that's weird, man. Like, ugh, ugh, no, you can't, bro. You can't, man. You, you gotta. You got to switch it up with the names, bro. And especially, yo, if you're a boy, man, and you you meet a girl, you're going to know with this girl, and then you find out that you got the same name as her dad, bro, bro, you got to leave, man. You got to leave, bro. You got to get out of there, man. That's fucked up. Because that means she knows, man. She knows. And she didn't tell you the name of her dad. All right? You got you, you to gotta get out of there, man. You got to run. You got to sprint, man. That's a sprint. That's a full... 100%, you know, fucking, what's his fucking name? Um, oh, why am I blanking on this, guys? What the hell is the name of the fucking sprinter? Usain Bolt. You gotta fucking bolt out of there, bro. Usain Bolt out of there. Um, all right, so then this last one comes from Super Opie. I almost broke up with a girl when she was trying to be seductive and yanked my book out of my hand and closed it, losing my spot. Reply from Evan was here. Hated this. 
She would sleep in Sunday mornings, and my biological clock still woke me up. Still woke me up uh, on my weekday work time, so I would just catch up on the news on Sunday quietly in bed uh, next to her, still cuddling. But if she woke up next to me and saw that I was reading, she would yank it out of my hand and throw a tantrum that I wasn't paying enough attention to her while she slept. As a bonus, when we were awake, she didn't want me to read the news or books either. She wanted to always talk or do stuff together. I just needed some goddamn time, but she hated that. So I just read constantly around her until she broke up with me. There you go. You got to find your way out of these relationships, my friends. But I, the first one was a little was a little bit more innocent sounding. But uh, I got to tell you, man, that would frustrate me, especially when you're like locked in. You're interested. Like I was I was reading one of my books the other day at uh, Starbucks, and and I couldn't imagine what it would have been like if someone just came in and closed that. I would have been like. Well, what the fuck? Why would you do that? Like, even if they, even if they were like, "Hey, I saw you from over there." Like, even if it was the most, the most, the most amazing thing you could think happened to you. If someone comes up, they want to hit on you. Like, "Hey, I saw you from over there." I'd be like, "Listen, I really appreciate you coming over here to say this, but you closed my book. I lost my spot. I was really into that. All right." I'd be like, "Thanks, but." Eh. Yeah, you know, yeah. Anyways, welcome to the Reddit Ass Ass Podcast. That's going to be the end of the show for everybody. I'm so glad all of you have been tuning in to the show. The audience is growing all the time. I'm so happy, so thankful that everyone gets to join in in this wonderful uh, exchange and experience between the both of us because this is a fundamental relationship that we have, my friends. And I am uh, so glad to be sharing everything uh with you and i'm so glad to have all of you listening into every single episode every week i am ecstatic so thank you all so much for tuning in on the reddit ass sauce podcast remember if you're watching on youtube make sure to like make sure to comment and to subscribe if you're listening on apple Podcasts, spotify wherever else you get your podcast make sure to leave us a rating and also please leave us a review why don't you go ahead and give us a follow on instagram and tiktok at Reddit Asks Us Podcast, I am your host, Luke Dick. Thank you all so much for tuning in, and I will see y'all on Thursday. And hold me to that, okay? Peace out.